has a very low speaker budget. Um, I, what I try to do is say to them, so tell me about your audience. From a scale of 1 to 10, with how important this, these people are to the profitability and the success of your company, where would you rank your audience? Well, generally, there are 7, 8, 9, or 10. I mean, if someone's going to have a meeting and spend money and have a budget and bring people in and offer them hotels, these are fairly important people to the bottom line of this company. So they generally answer, oh, they're 7s, 8s. Uh, you know, if they're, they're top salespeople, 9s and 10s. If they're leadership team, 9s and 10s. I said, so you have a level 8, 9, or 10. That's the level that represents your audience, yes. And I said, but you have a level 2 speaker budget. You know, speakers kind of start here and they kind of go here. And anyone that's planning a meeting should know about the lowest that you would pay for a speaker that you have any right to assume anything from and about the highest for a non-celebrity speaker. In other words, people who have you know, won Heisman trophies and you know, climbed Mount Everest, or, those are celebrities. But for a non-celebrity speaker, they go from here to here. And every event planner should know that. If you say, what's an entry-level speaking fee for a professional speaker, they should say blah, blah, blah. And what's about the highest a non-celebrity? Oh, it's here. Okay. Well, once we have that picture in our mind, then we can level it. So an entry level would be about a level one speaker. And I was there. We are the ones that were just starting. We have an adequate speech. We have a, a good, significant delivery. Uh, we can connect. We have some good information. But we're here. And, and we're at this price for a reason. And that's why I tell my event planners, no one's at a certain speaker fee because they're nice people. They're at the speaker fee because at that point in their life, that fee represents their experience, their education, their credentials, their client list, their knowledge, their connectivity to the audience. A speaker fee is a reflection of everything possible you could want. And you have a right to expect that the higher you pay, the greater all of these will be, and the lower you pay, the less all of these will be. And it makes sense. If a speaker fees down here at level one and two, their goal would be to keep getting higher and higher. Keep get when I started out here, my goal was to go back to school and then to write another book and then to interview and do some research studies. I mean, my goal was to constantly raise my fee, but I knew that to raise my fee, I had to earn it. So I had to learn more, do more, be more credible to justify the fee. Mm -hmm. So what I tell my event planners is, if you have a level 8, 9, or 10 audience, you can't put a level 2, 3, or 4 speaker in front of them. They're going to eat them alive. It would be like putting a, a teacher with a third grade education in front of high school students. Your speaker needs to be at the level equal to or probably above the level of the audience. The speaker should be top of their game if your audience is at the top of their game. If your audience is some of the top people, then the speaker needs to be one of the top speakers around. Because what we want to do is, if we're going to teach somebody, we need to be the kind of person that they look up to and respect. Because we know more, we've done more, we've earned more, we understand more. And that's what gives us the credibility to come in and help teach other people. So that's what I tell my meeting planners. Figure out the level of your audience, figure out the beginning speaker fee up to the end, and then try to match the level of your audience with the level of your speaker. And that's your best shot for making sure that your audience walks away and says, wow, that is something I wish I had heard 20 years ago.